So the food should be here in a couple minutes, but in the meantime, this is your daily reminder to Gradle update and rebuild the client. Um, version 1.0.8 was just released, which just in time for visualizing the blockchain, among other things. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely get that. And oh yeah, there we are. Okay. Well, the food just got here, so I'll actually start in a couple minutes. But in the meantime, update, get food, and then we'll start doing communication stuff. Uh, all right, go ahead and grab some burritos, chips and soda and stuff, and, uh, and we'll get started soon. Sorry, there's no food for you, Twitch. 
you're if you're in the area, feel free to come by. But otherwise, pretty hard to share a burrito.
Oh, yeah. One block of space, is there an infinite amount of dirt? Yes. Uh, let's get started. Um, so I've gone ahead and made a couple of changes to Lecture Player already, um, starting, starting a bit of a framework for our communications that we're going to do. Uh, so let me just show you the, the setup that I, I have so far. So the, the overall plan for communications is, uh, so the blockchain doesn't tell you who sent the message. So first things first, we need to know, uh, you know where, where the message came from, whether it was from our team or the other team. Um, so the way that I decided to do that was to randomly generate this number, the team secret. And uh, all of our messages are going to start with this. So that way, that way we can tell them apart. Um, and then we're going to have different kinds of messages. So we'll have to include in every message the, the type of message that it is. So right now, the only type of message is the HQ location type, um, which we plan to use to convey the HQ location to things that spawn far away, like landscapers. Um, and, uh, and so that's message type zero. Uh, and then after that, the rest of the data will be up to whatever the message type is. So in the case of HQ lock, um, there's this function, send HQ lock. Uh, and so what it does is it starts the message out empty, just an array of seven zeros. Um, and then the first, the first element is always the team secret. The second element uh, is going to be, since this is the send HQ location function, zero, because that's this message type. Uh, and then we'll send the X and Y location as the, the next two elements, and then just not bother using the last uh, three in the array. Uh, and then just check if you can submit the transaction, and if so, submit it. Uh, so this is just a, a little function that generates a message of the type HQ location, adds the team secret so we know it's from us, and then uh, submits it to the blockchain with a bid of three. Um, so the other team, if they were spamming the blockchain with lots of high cost transactions, could prevent this from going through but it'll end up in the pool of messages and eventually, hopefully, end up in the blockchain. And uh, if we find that it's not, then we can increase the, the transaction cost or something like that. Um, and so I've run a game with this function where the HQ on turn one broadcasts its location. And sure enough, turn one, the blockchain message starts with all these fours, so it's clearly from us. The message type is zero, and 50 and 100 is the message data. And sure enough, if we look at this blue HQ, it's at x50 and y, or sorry, 50 and 10. It's x50, y10. So great, our message ended up in the blockchain, and uh, now we can we can read it out. Um, so I made another little function 
get HQ location from blockchain, which doesn't do much right now. But the plan is to start at round one and walk through each block until you find this transaction which has the HQ location. Um, all it does now is just print out blockchain a bunch and then print out the block. Um, but we can do better than that. So let's look at what is actually in this block. So back to the Java docs. Um, we can look at robot controller get block, see what that does. So it takes a round number, which is what we have. We're, we're marching the round numbers from one up to the current round. And we get block i. So starting with round one, that should return a, an array of transactions, um, which is the up to seven transactions that were included in that block. So if we look at a single transaction, uh, we can see that we can, we can get this information about it. Um, the cost, the message, and then the serialized message. Um, so the message is that seven integer array that we're so interested in. So let's get that first and, uh, and just print it out for now. So we'll get block dot, uh, or so this is gonna be an array of transactions. Um, let's put this print statement out here because that's too much blockchain. Uh, so this, this rc.getBlock is going to be an array of transactions. So what we can do is we can just loop over each of those transactions with a, a little for loop. Uh, transaction uh, t in rc.getBlock. So that'll, that'll loop over them. Uh, and if there aren't any, then that's fine. Uh, the for loop just won't execute. Uh, or it'll execute, but there will be no loops. Um, so great, now we're going to have a transaction T, we'll call it TX because it's standard. Um, so transaction TX, and then let's just for now uh, print anything that starts with our team secret. So we can, we can check that with an if statement. Uh, if TX dot, uh, or let's get the message first. So the message is again an integer array. So we'll do int uh, array uh, mess equals tx dot get message. And then we can check if uh, mess zero equals the team secret. Um, oh, equals equals team secret. Then let's system dot out dot print ln. Um, got a team message. And then we can just print the message after that. Uh, yes. OK, so let's see how that goes. Okay, so if we go to the, well, let's first confirm that it made it into the blockchain. So we'll step forward. And sure enough, we have a block in there. So let's go to the logs. And, uh, and we'll have to play a bit. We'll see. Oh, got a team message. Great. Um, oh, the message to string is not what I thought it was. But that's good that we're getting team messages. So let's continue and extracts the useful information there. Um, so because this is the HQ location, we're trying to get the HQ location. We actually want messages where mess zero equals team secret and mess one uh, equals zero, which is the message type for HQ location. Um, also, I should say there are a lot of other ways to do communication. This is not necessarily the best, uh, but this is the one that I decided to use so we're going to run with it. Um, anyways, so if, we got, if, it's our, if it's from our team and if it's of the right type, great. Um, we can now print something more specific. Found the HQ. And then we can print out, uh, so we can say that HQ lock is equal to new map location. Um, so this is, this is just like Python sort of uh, 
we're just creating a new object of the type map location. Um, in Python, I think you would often don't need the new, but in Java you always need the new keyword um, when you're when you're creating it from the constructor like this. So new map location and message uh, two is the x location and message three is the y location. So let's print oh let's print that out uh, hq log. And, uh, and now we should have the HQ location for all, all of the units calling get HQ lock from blockchain, which I put helpfully in the function where we had that to do before. So when you try to find the HQ, you look at the robots around you, and now if you don't find the HQ just from looking around, you'll search the blockchain. Uh, so that's great. Um, and let's see if that's actually what happens. And again, we're expecting to see a message of 50, 10. Oh, no, that's not what we're expecting. Cannot, oh, I mistyped map location. Need to capital L. Uh, okay. Right, so we're expecting to see the, uh, the landscapers that are produced far away to print out 50, 10 as the location of the HQ. And then, instead of wandering randomly, they should make a beeline for it, uh, which is a lot better than in, in our previous games, where uh, the landscapers just wandered around lost until they happened to find the HQ. Uh, so let's see if that does what we want. Okay, great. Found the HQ, 5010. Uh, it looks like the... So there's good news and bad news. The good news is... They're finding the HQ from the blockchain, so that's amazing. Uh, the bad news is that there aren't any landscapers yet, so, and all of the miners should know where it is. So there's something else that's going on here. And let's take a look at exactly when this function is being called. Uh, and we also, we don't need to print this out anymore uh, because now the HQ lock is just updated. Um, oh, that's not true. The reason is that I'm, I'm, I didn't return the HQ location in this function, which is what it's supposed to do. Um, so we found the HQ location, um, but instead of returning it, since HQ lock is like a global variable, we might as well just update it and make this a function that doesn't return a map location. It just updates the HQ lock, uh, which should no longer be null. Uh, and then let's go back up here and check so if it's still null, then we get it from the blockchain. Uh, great. So now if we run another game for longer, we should see that the landscapers make a beeline for the HQ. Unless I am bad again. Oh, right. Now this isn't returning anything. We don't need to assign it here. Uh, right, so what this is going to do, check nearby robots up here. HQ lock is still equal to null after all that. Then we update it with this get HQ lock from blockchain function. Uh, and that will set it down here. Um, and since this is all in the same class, all in the same file and everything, uh, this HQ location, despite being 300 lines below where it's defined, is still totally accessible by all the functions that we write. So this is OK to do. Uh, it might be bad organization, but it works. Uh, and we'll, we'll do a lecture probably early next week or shortly after the sprint tournament on maybe some suggestions for how to organize your bot into multiple files even uh, so that you can, I don't know, be more sane about your project structure. Uh, okay, great. All right, let's see. There should be some landscapers soonish. They're still building those design schools. This is the other thing we need communication for, is so that the miners can coordinate and not build all of these useless design schools. Oh, great, all these landscapers are here. They all made it right, right to the HQ. That's fantastic. Um, 
Okay, so this seems like it's been a success. Let's just check out one of these landscapers to see what it's printing. Um, we'll do it, let's see, a little closer to where it comes into existence. Where does the first, oh, there we go. Okay, here's the first landscaper. Um, amazing, okay, so it doesn't even, oh, this one, okay, this one didn't even have to search the blockchain because it got created so close to the HQ anyways. Um, well, whatever, we confirmed that it worked with the miners, so let's just call that a success and continue. The next most pressing thing, I think clearly, is to cut down on the number of design schools here. Um, so let's make a new message type uh, for when a design school comes into existence. And, uh, and we can have the miners keep track of that. And uh, if there are too many design schools, then we uh, can, can stop building them. Um, so we'll make a new message type. Um, design uh, school created. Uh, so this is going to be message type two, um, or message type one. And we can make a new function that's going to be similar to this one. Uh, so we'll go down here and we'll make a copy. And this one will be uh, broadcast design school creation. Okay, uh, and I guess we might as well send the location of the design school because we have plenty of room in our message anyways. Uh, so, this is going to be type one, and we'll just submit the X and Y, and then send that transaction. Um, the only problem here now is that we might not succeed. If we spend all of our soup on the design school, we may not succeed in submitting this transaction. Um, so we're going to have to keep track of, of whether it worked or not. And... Uh, and it'll get it'll be a little messier than the HQ one, where we always have enough uh, we always have enough soup because we send it turn one, and we're not going to run out just building one miner. So we'll make a uh, we'll make another variable down here, uh, which is the public static boolean uh, So we'll call it broadcasted creation. Oh wait, that's not that. Broadcasted creation equals false. So this is if the unit has been created, but has not uh, has not successfully sent this message yet. And then if we do succeed in sending the message, we'll say um, broadcasted creation equals true right here. And that way, up in the run design school message. Uh, we can say if uh, not broadcasted creation, then broadcast design school creation of rc.getLocation. So this will broadcast its location. Uh, and then uh, as soon as that succeeds finally, um, we'll stop trying to broadcast it. Uh, and so this is great. Let's, uh, let's see if it, if it goes in by running another game. And so the plan is, once we're broadcasting every time a design school gets created, we can have the, um, the HQ and the miners checking the blockchain every turn to see if there are any design school creation messages. And then every time it sees one of those messages, it can just uh, update the number of design schools that it, it thinks exist. And if there are more than like three, then we can stop building design schools. Um, so let's jump ahead to where the landscapers pro or the design schools probably come into existence. And okay, there's one. So let's look down at the blockchain. Uh, okay, let's see, where which turn? Oh, here we go. Wow, lucky click. Okay, so. Uh, we have we see that this message is from our team, 
uh, we see that it's message type one, which is design school creation. And then we have 55.0, which is, I think, this design school. Yeah, perfect. Okay, x55, y0. So this is working. They're, uh, they're submitting these messages to the blockchain. And now we can have uh, our miners keep track of, uh, of where, where all this stuff is. So let's do that next. Um, uh, all right. So we're going to need to make a new communication function. I'm just organizing them all down at the bottom. Um, so this one is going to be public static um, void. Uh, and we can just call it update unit counts because maybe we'll want to count other types of units eventually. So no need to restrict ourselves unnecessarily. Um, and this can throw game action exception as always. Uh, throws game action exception. Okay. Uh, and uh, so what, what we want this function to do is check the latest block for unit creation messages. Uh, and right now, all it's going to do is check for, uh, check for design schools. So, um, so that's okay. Uh, one fancy trick that we could do if we wanted to make this more future-proof is instead of making this function just for design schools, we could make it broadcast any type of unit. Um, and uh, because that's probably a good forward-thinking thing to do, I'll skip it for now and we'll, we'll do it later. Um, okay, so update unit counts can get the, so first things first, we need to read the blockchain. Uh, this time only the most, the most recent uh, message. So we can rc.getBlock, uh, we're gonna probably take a lot of this same code, so I'm just gonna copy it. Um, so we'll do most of the same thing, where we wanna loop through all the transactions uh, in a particular round, but now the round is just uh, rc dot get round num uh, minus one. So the block from last round. And uh, then, okay, so we've got the message for the transaction. If now we want the message type to be one, which means design school creation, uh, we can print out, I guess, heard about a cool new school. And, and then we can print out, uh, we don't want to set the HQ location. We want to increase the design school count. So right now, we don't even care where the design schools are. We're just going to keep track of how many there are. Design school count plus equals one. And so this variable doesn't exist yet, so let's go make it. Um, oh, I guess to be consistent, I should call it uh, num design schools. That can start at zero. So let's go back down here and change the variable. Change the variable name. Uh, num design schools. Okay, great. Uh, so the last thing we need to do is to make the miners actually use this function. Um, and what we want to do for that is we can just put it at the beginning of their turn. So for run minor, uh, we'll just do update design, update unit counts. Yeah, great. Uh, so first thing, it'll do that. And now, instead of always creating a design school, uh, so we don't want to do it if there's one. Well, now, now instead of using our previous heuristic of if there's one nearby, then we probably don't need another one. We don't really care where they are. We'll just say if the number of design schools is too low, then build a new one. So if num design schools less than three seems like a good number. Um, yeah, three seems fine. Um, then we'll create one. So that's great. 
and uh, let's see how it goes. Oh, that's not where I want it to be. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Uh, learn. Learn game. All right. No exceptions. It's always good. Okay, let's look at the logs. <coughs> oh, it only made it, oh, never mind. Okay, so let's see if there's anything going on here. So this was turn 16. Well, I want to see at the beginning what's happening. I think we may have introduced a bug. By we, I mean me. Uh, where on the very first turn, the block, what, the blockchain is, the current round minus one is going to be an invalid block. Uh, so I suspect that these miners uh, are potentially going to be throwing exceptions, but maybe not. Maybe they don't get created soon enough. So. I'm an HQ, I just got created. Uh, do, do, minor just got created. It's gonna be one of these two. He was created on turn three. This one was created on turn two. Oh, I guess since the miner doesn't get created until turn two, we're okay. Um, I do wanna check why the HQ isn't creating them on round one. So let's step backwards and just see what's going on here. Okay, so round zero, nothing happens. Round one, miners are created. Okay, that's fine. I guess the miner doesn't get to act until next turn. Um, okay, great. So we haven't put any bugs in. And now we should see that the miners only build three design schools this game. All right, there's the three, and hopefully, yeah, okay, great. So they're building landscapers now, and uh, there are only, only three design schools. Fantastic. Uh, we're having another problem where these landscapers are getting trapped outside the wall, and they can only help for so long because eventually they've, they've dug themselves into a moat and they get flooded. But at least we have these four who made it onto the wall before that happened, so I guess that'll have to do for now. Um, we can improve that with, with communication and better navigation also. Um, more realistically, better navigation. Um, because landscapers, fortunately, can path through anything just by building their own path. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see that in the advanced nav lecture uh, next week. But, uh, but this is great. OK, so now we don't build too many design schools anymore. Uh, the next thing that we should probably communicate about is where soup is because our miners are still wandering around aimlessly and not finding soup very efficiently at all. Uh, so let's commit what we have and, uh, and then get to that. And really I should have been committing more frequently if I wanted to have ideal style, should have committed the like communication setup, and then committed the HQ location things, but I forgot. So we're going to commit it all at once and just make sure that there's nothing crazy in here. We've added design schools, removed our to-do, and did the to-do, uh, broadcasting the HQ location, uh, commenting out the try blockchain thing, and instead updating unit counts, and then we improved the condition to design schools less than three. Uh, Yes, if we haven't broadcasted the creation of the design school, then we do that. And then we have all this communication stuff down at the bottom that we added. So that's great. We'll git commit um, communications setup uh, HQ lock and design school broadcasts. Broadcasts. Okay. So we can get pull just to make sure nothing else has changed and then push 
so the rest of the team can benefit. Okay, let's do suplications. Um, all right, so we need a new type of message. Or sorry, does anyone have questions so far? I've kind of been flying through this. Uh, any questions from Twitch also? Uh, so far, no, I think we're talking about soup. All right, great, as you were. Um, okay, new message type. Uh, where is it? Uh, right here, okay. So I'm just gonna make this better indented. Okay, so the new message type is soup location. And uh, we should make a new function for broadcasting soup location. Um, okay, public static void broadcast soup location. And this will have to take a map location. And as always, throws game action exception. OK. Uh, so let's take a lot of the same stuff from here. Anytime you copy and paste a bunch of things from one method to another, you should think to yourself, this is an opportunity to make it one function and just more generalized. Um, I'm going to think that to myself, but I'm going to ignore it because we're mid-lecture and that'll have to wait. We ha I have to build up enough technical debt that I can, that I can justify having an organization lecture next week. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to make a lot of bad choices so that we can fix them later. Okay, message type two. Um, that is all I had to change for this entire function. Oh, no, this. Um, okay, and if the soup creation message doesn't go through, we're not going to worry, or the soup broadcast message doesn't go through, we're not going to worry about it too much uh, because if uh, we can just rediscover the soup next turn and get excited and send another message then. Um, okay, so that's the beginnings. Uh, we can now broadcast soup locations. Uh, we're, of course, going to need public static uh, void update soup locations. And this is going to also be very similar to another function, which we'll want to combine later. And that is the, uh, the update unit counts. So in the game spec and the unit costs list, or not in the spec, but in the, the function cost list, you may have noticed that rc.getBlock is actually a pretty expensive function. It costs 100 bytecode. Um, and then it costs, of course, more bytecode to like loop through it and check all the stuff. Um, but as functions go, or as basic building block functions go, get block is like pretty much as expensive as it gets. Uh, so there's some opportunity here where if we're already getting the block to update the design school locations, then we could just use the same block that we, we just learned about and update the soup locations as well. Um, but again, we're not going to do that yet because I have to make enough bad choices to justify a organization lecture. Um, but again, something to think about over the weekend before the organization lecture, uh, just places you can save some uh, expensive function calls. Uh, okay, great. So this one, we're looking for message type two. Um, and this one is going to be a new soup location. Location, a tasty new soup location. Um, and now, okay, so now we need something to keep track of soup locations. Uh, let's do an array list because those are exciting and new, um, or like new it, to us at least. Um, so we need to import, uh, actually, I don't even remember where they're imported from, so we use our good friend Google. Uh, do, do, do. Java array list import. And we can see that it's java.util dot 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 dot. Great. Uh, that's not helpful. Um, Java for complete beginners. That sounds good. I just need to know the import. Come on. 
gstatic.com. Do better. Okay. Uh, here we go. So this is what we want. Great. Uh, okay. So let's go back and import that thing. And so array lists are much more like the Python use the Python lists you may be used to. So normal Java arrays, you can't increase their length once they're created. You can't remove things from them. I mean, you can remove things, but you have to like overwrite it with something else. You can't change the length of the list. Um, array lists are much friendlier, um, and they let you uh, add stuff to the end and, and remove things from the middle and all that all that fun stuff. Um, so we'll make a new static uh, array list. And since everything in Java is typed, um, the way that we did normal arrays was just by putting this, these little square brackets after the type that we want. But array lists are their own object, and they need to know the type of the thing that they're going to be holding. And so for us, it's going to be an array list of map locations. And so this, this is the syntax for creating a list of a certain type. Um, a good question would be, does this mean that even with array lists, you can't have things of different types in the same array? Uh, and the answer is sort of. Uh, you can't have things of of different. Uh, you can't have things that aren't this type. But every object or every class in Java is a descendant of the object class. So if I had an array list of objects, then I could store whatever I wanted in there. Um, but the problem is that when I get it back out, um, it's going to have type object. So I need to know uh, what to do with it. Like I need to have some way of figuring out like what it actually is after that, um, and if that doesn't make sense, I will show you an example shortly, which will make it make more sense. Uh, so, anyways, map location of soup locations equals, uh, and we'll just make an empty new array list of the type that we want, which is map locations. Okay. And just to make sure that I am importing everything and doing the syntax correctly, let's just run a game to see if there are errors. Amazing. It made it past the part where there would be errors. OK. Back to what we were doing, array lists. So right now, our soup locations is totally empty. But if we find out about a good new soup location, we will definitely want to make note of that. So we'll say soup locations dot, uh, I believe it's add, but I'm going to confirm with the intro to Java website, uh, so that because that's faster than running it and being wrong. Um, yes, add amazing. Okay, so suplications dot add a new map location, which is the one that's in the message. So message two and message three. Great. Okay, so we're we're adding suplications, so that's fantastic. Um, we should probably broadcast soup locations as well. Uh, so let's go back to our miners and run miner. Uh, okay, so in the case that we uh, can mine some soup, uh, that's that's great. We should we should tell our friends. Um, so. So we'll do that. Um, if we have successfully mined some soup, we'll, of course, print it out because that's exciting. And then what we should do is we don't want to broadcast necessarily every soup location, but let's just do that for now if it's not already in the list um, because uh, we'll, we'll figure out how to improve that later. But for now, it's OK to, to broadcast lots of soup locations. So we'll go back to our handy reference here, 
and we can look for the function which checks if something is in the list because um, I don't want to I don't want to write it myself. Uh, includes oh man okay Java array list includes. I'm pretty sure it's includes, but again, it's faster to do it this way than to like run the wrong thing. Um, so while we're doing the okay, oh contains, great. That's why I googled it. Uh, okay. Okay, we I did realize we're gonna have a different problem, which is that. The map locations are different objects even if they have the same coordinates. So we should check the Java docs because if we try to check if two map locations are equal, which is what contains does, uh, and they're different objects even if they have the same data, unless map location has overridden the equals function, uh, it's going to return false. Uh, and it looks like Oh, it has overridden equals. That's fantastic. So let's just do a little, a little test to make sure. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, great. So let's say if. Um, okay, so the the soup soup lock is going to be the map location soup lock is going to be our current location uh, plus the direction that we just mined in. And so if uh, soup locations dot contains soup lock, nope, soup lock, uh, well, we really want the opposite of that. So if it doesn't contain the soup location, then we want to broadcast a new soup location. So we'll do that uh, with soup lock right here. Great. OK, so if it's not already there, we'll broadcast a new one. Uh, and now, finally, we can take action on the soup locations. And instead of going in a random direction, we can uh, move towards soup, which is always a good strategy, just in general. Okay, so else if um, soup locations dot size. So for normal arrays, you do dot length, but for array lists, you do dot size. Don't ask me why. If that upsets you, blame Oracle. Okay, um, if soup locations dot size is greater than zero, we'll go there instead. Uh, so we'll say go to uh, soup locations uh, dot get zero. And so this is zero. Uh, zero. So this is how you um, this is how you get uh, elements from an array list. For normal arrays, we would have just done uh, this. But array lists are different and special, so they have to have a get function. Um, and that's, that's how we're going to do it. OK, so there's probably going to be an error somewhere. But if not, then what we should see is that our miners should now uh, uh, flock to soup a lot better. Um, so as soon as one discovers some soup, the rest of them should, uh, should move towards it. And there should be a lot less random movement from our miners. Oh, wow. It just worked. Amazing. OK. Uh, let's see. What's, or we should watch the, uh, watch the blockchain for, for soup messages. So we'll go ahead and jump ahead some. OK. Oh, wow. Look at all this soup. Uh, it looks like they're sending the same message many times. So we should look into that. Um, but otherwise, our miners are, are doing an okay job. These ones are still moving around randomly, so I don't know why they're doing that. Let's 
take a closer look. Um, let's see if this miner prints anything about finding soup locations. Um, so we'll keep stepping. Oh, oh, I know that's a new a new school, not a new soup. All right, I think I know what the problem is, and it's that we never check for soup locations, uh, which would be a problem. Um, I think we actually, I mean, I keep saying we, but it's really my fault. Um, <laughs> we never uh, uh, update soup locations. Yes, great, okay. Uh, so let's go back up to run miner, and we'll update the unit counts, and then we'll update soup locations. All right, and now they should do all of the intelligent things that I said, uh, but, we also want to make sure that we're not rebroadcasting the same thing, um, which, which would be a problem. And it looked like it was happening this game. So like this miner, um, did we put a function in, or a print statement in for when we broadcasted? Let's see. No. Darn, I'm going to do that. Uh, so let's system.out.print ln new soup. Uh, and then the location of the soup. Okay, let's see how this goes. Great. All right. Let's see what these miners do. Oh, that was fast. Okay. Uh, oh, wow, they are really all going towards that soup, so I think something worked. Uh, let's see what this one's saying. Okay. Uh, oh, he heard about Tasty New Soup twice. That's really good. Um, and let's see, mine soup. Is it going to print out? Wow, it worked. So they all learn about the soup. Print uh, the uh, print when they learn about soup. Um, they're not rebroadcasting, so our so the you know ever insightful developers of Battlecode included uh, overriding dot equals for map locations, so we can use functions like contains that use the equals check. Because um, normally in Java, even if the object has the same data, it's like totally different instances of the same class. Uh, so the regular equals will not uh, will not check or will not return true for things that have the same data. But you can override that if, with your class if you want map locations that refer to the same location to be equal. Then you can override the function and just check the x and y coordinate, uh, which is what they've done, and that's great for us. Uh, so now, okay, so great. All these miners got all this soup, and and now, but now they're just still stuck around this this location here, um, which is a shame because there's all this soup on the rest of the map um, that they should really that they should really know about, uh, or that they should really explore to. Um, so next, let's remove soup locations that don't actually have any soup. Um, so what we'll do is go to uh, the minor function again, and let's add a new check at the beginning of the run minor turn. Uh, so we can uh, so check if soup is gone, if soup gone. Uh, and so this function, we'll put it down with the other helper functions. Um, where are the other helper functions? Run delivery drone, net gun, random direction. Okay. Let's just put it here. Um, again, more bad organization, so we can have better organization later. Okay, static, void, uh, what did I even just say? Soup gone. Check if soup gone. Great. Um, so this 
is going to also have to throw a game action exception because we're going to be interacting with RC. Uh, all right. So what we want to do is, what we could do is we could check each element of the array and see if there's still soup at that location. Um, but let's be lazy and just check the first element and remove it if there's no soup. Um, so we'll start by just looking at, well, so first we need to see uh, if the soup locations even has anything in it. Um, so if soup locations dot size is greater than zero, uh, then we want to do stuff. So uh, the location that we would go to is the first element. Oh, autocomplete. Okay. Uh, map location um, target soup lock. Uh, is going to be the soup locations dot get zero. And so what we want to do is if we can sense that location, then we can look at how much soup is there. So can sense, I think it's can sense location, but let's check the docs to be sure. So we'll go back to robot controller. Can sense location, great. Uh, can sense location of the target soup lock. Then if we can sense the location, we should check if there's soup there. So let's see what that is. Uh, sense soup, maybe? Amazing, okay. Great, so then we can say uh, if uh, again, since Java short circuits uh, if statements, um, if this is false, if we can't sense the location, then trying to sense the soup would throw an error. But if this is false, then it won't uh, evaluate the rest of the if statement because this is an and. Uh, so we can go ahead and check it right here. I'm going to put it on another line so it's easier to read. Um, rc.sense soup at the target soup block. Uh, if this is equal to zero, that's when we want to take action. Uh, and so the action that we want to take is to remove something from an array list. So let's go back to our handy array list guide for beginners. And uh, I think it's called remove. Yes, great. Uh, this will remove the first, um, oh, we can just remove it by index, so that's perfect. Uh, so we'll go ahead and say uh, soup locations dot remove zero. Okay, so now our miners should be intelligent enough to notice when soup is gone and go somewhere else if or move around randomly again if they don't if they don't know about any soup, but uh, go somewhere else if they do know about other soup locations, other potential soup locations. Okay, let's let the game run and then watch it so it's less laggy. Okay, the miners are gonna have not found anything yet. I'm just waiting for the game to end, so okay, now it'll be less laggy. All right, so they've found that soup and all the miners are flocking to it. Great, when the soup disappears, they all scatter again. One finds it over there, wow, and they all, they all go straight there, amazing. But then they, oh, but they all want to go back to the HQ, but they can't because it's surrounded by this protective wall. Um, so this is great. We, we see that our communication is super effective they really cleaned up that soup, uh, found some more soup over there, and, and went straight to it. So that's fantastic. Um, and the next 
problem seems to be that we need refineries. Um, but since this is a communications lecture, let's commit the communication stuff first and, uh, and then think about other stuff later. Okay, so, all right, we're removing soup locations, great. Let's see, status, good, get diff. All right, so we've added this array list business. Uh, we're now updating soup locations. We've added uh, some more functionality to when mining is successful. Um, and then we move towards the soup locations if we know of any. Also check if the soup is gone, that's great. Got our new message type. And we have the broadcast and update soup location communications functions. Uh, so that's great. Let's commit this. Um, uh, communi uh, communicate and swarm soup locations. So that's great. We're already we're already starting to get some intelligent looking behavior out of our bot. Uh, despite its author, and the uh, the miners are like swarming to the locations that they should, um, so so that's great, um, and and we've used communications in a variety of ways to send uh, a bunch of different types of messages about different kinds of things, so that's good too, um, and you know I think I think that's a good stopping point for communications. Um, do, do people want me to continue, uh, or if you have suggestions for other things that we should be communicating, or if you want to uh, build some refineries, uh, we could do that. Uh, or if you want to go home and improve your bots, that's an option also. Uh, so just do a quick vote. Uh, communication ideas? All right, no one has communication ideas. Oh, oh no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, that was, yeah. Um, and okay, so refineries. All right, go home. All right, go home. It is. <laughs> um, we'll continue tomorrow with debugging, uh, which is very important and useful. And we have a lot of tools besides print statements for it, uh, which I've I've had to restrain myself from using, but will be a lot of fun tomorrow. Uh, so good luck. And oh, tw question from Discord. Is drowning the only way non-drone robots can be killed? Yes. Uh, or I guess you could also throw an exception that doesn't get caught to blow up your own robots. But that seems bad. Yeah. All right. Um, thanks for watching, Twitch. See ya. <laughs>